Uveitis is really, I think about it as a systemic disorder. So it's inflammation we see in the eye, but it usually indicates that something else is going on in the rest of the body. So it really is a multidisciplinary disciplinary approach. Um, you we work a lot with the rheumatologists, we work a lot with infectious disease because syphilis can uh, present as uveitis. Uh, we work along with oncologists because you could have lymphoma presenting as uveitis. So really uveitis is a um, multidisciplinary approach. And when we approach the patient, we need to really think about what other systemic problems they may be having and collaborate with their other um, providers. The treatments that we use for uveitis can also affect other conditions. For example, we use oral steroids. And in a patient with diabetes, you can cause their blood sugar to become elevated. So you really also may need to work with the endocrinologist um, in, in the care of these patients. So really, um, it's a multidisciplinary approach, and that's the way I approach most of my patients. So uveitis is a systemic disorder. So I think for uveitis patients, you really need to take a good history because um, often you can get clues as to what is the etiology from the history. You need to review their medical history, their travel history. You need to review what medications they've been taking because a lot of medications are have been associated with uveitis. Um, if the patient has a history of uh, a malignancy or cancer, they may present as a masquerade syndrome as uveitis. You also have to think about the patient's age because at different ages, you may have different um, diseases or different pathologies. So start by taking a good history. Then you're doing your physical examination. You need to examine the eye and each part of the examination will give you a clue as to what may be involved. So I have our residents really take a look the anterior segment, they look for inflammation, they look posteriorly if there's inflammation, they look at the retinas involved, they look at the cord. And then we use imaging to assist us with um, additional um, information to help us with our diagnosis. Whether we need to get a fluorescein angiogram, we may need to get an OCT um, or autofluorescence, and that may give you additional clue as what may be involved. Once you have done that, then you're gonna think, is this infectious or non-infectious? Because really that's what we need to know. And you always need to have a suspicion that this could be infectious. So you need to make sure you rule that out. So in fact, common infections like syphilis, tuberculosis, toxoplasmosis, so you wanna get those tests to evaluate. Once you realize that it's not infectious, if you realize it's infectious and you identify a cause, you treat that appropriately and you may need to consult with the infectious disease specialist. If it's non-infectious, then you go along another path where they usually need immunosuppression, and you can either do that as an ophthalmologist, or you may do that in collaboration with other doctors, such as a um, rheumatologist, to help with systemic immunosuppression. So in summary, if a patient presents with acute uveitis that's mild, unilateral, you can start and it's anterior, you could just start with topical steroids. Um, you may not need to work that patient up if there are no other indications of anything. Recently, we have had a lot of new imaging available to us as ophthalmologists, and um, they do play a vital role in um, the management of these patients. So, um, for example, OCT, is very useful in determining if a patient has macroedema. For example, with patients with cataract surgery, you want to know that before they have the surgery, or it may indicate why a patient may eyes may appear quiet, but their vision is reduced. Um, other modalities we use, we use fluorescein angiogram to look for leakage or abnormal blood vessels growing, new vascularization. Uh, we use the uh, autofluorescence to determine if there's hypo or hyper or hypo autofluorescence. And this helps us determine if a disease may be active. Uh, for example, some of the white dot syndromes and areas that are hyper autofluorescence, we, can, this can tell us that the disease is active or if it's hypo autofluorescence, we can say it's um, not as active. So we can use those imaging ultrasound, which has been around for a long time. 
We use that in patients who we are not able to see the fundus. Or if there is inflammation such as scleritis, we can get an ultrasound to see, see if there's fluid around the globe, looking at the T sign. So um, having various modalities um, in, in ophthalmology available to us has been very useful, both in the diagnosis and the management to see if, how these patients respond to our treatment. We use PCR a lot to help with our diagnosis. For example, if we suspect someone may have um, acute retinal necrosis or uh, uveitis due to one of the herpetic viruses, we can get fluid from the anterior chamber we call it, and um, send that for PCR, and that may help to confirm our diagnosis. Um, so I'd say diagnosis by getting samples from the eye, vitreous sampling, we can do that for lymphoma because um, lymphoma can present as a masquerade syndrome with, uh, where we think that it's uveitis, but it's really um, something else. So getting a tissue sample has been very helpful. Imaging has also been extremely helpful, um, having the availability of OCT, um, where we can see um, intraretinal fluid to diagnose macroedema as a cause for patients having poor vision. And this is useful even when you can't get a very good examination because the pupil is small. Um, so having imaging to help us with diagnosis, wide field fundus, um, wide, wide field fundus uh, fluorescein angiogram has also been helpful because we can see peripheral leakage, peripheral neovascularization. Autofluorescence has also been useful in helping us with managing a lot of white dot disorders. In general, you need to be careful of the patient with a red eye and really carefully examine the patient, the anterior segment and posteriorly for inflammation. Um, always make sure that you get a dilated fundus examination in a patient that presents with uveitis for the first time because they can have retinal whitening in the periphery and that um, may, may be associated with acute retinal necrosis, which can be devastating rapidly to cause vision loss. Mm -hmm.